Deep Blood is a 1989 shark exploitation horror film from director Rafael Donato and Joe D'Amato. The movie opens with a good old fashioned weenie roast. Ah, what a sausage fest! This isn't the kind of music you'd expect to open a film called Deep Blood. Hot dogs and bananas, what a feast! They're four friends just enjoying each other's company. If Stephen King wrote this, there'd be an orgy. Just then, Indian shows up. Hey, don't get mad at me. That's his name. He sits down to tell them about a prophecy. It turns out these four are destined to take a blood oath to kill an ancient spirit disguised as a shark that'll appear at some point in the movie. It was such a wonderful experience here with Andy. Sorry, you're going to need a ton to go. G.I. Joe! The kids decide they'd rather kill themselves. Seriously, kids, this is not how you become blood brothers. You cut your thumb or a finger, but not your wrist. One of them goes a little too deep, they'll mess up that whole prophecy. Indian then gives the boys an ancient carving, telling them the story of his tribe. He talks about the great beast and how to track it. We've got this priceless artifact that's going to teach us how to kill this monster in the future. What should we do with it? Let's bury it under six inches of sand where it'll get pulled out to sea when the tide comes in. Some years later, Ben is an amazing golfer, but in order to go pro, he has to quit college. Over at a military base, do not taxiway. Alan's being told he's leaving the base to join the officer's program. Say hello to your dad. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Ah, nepotism, alive and well. At a local beach, this little kid, his mom, and doggy are ready for a nice day. So the mom is in the ocean, and little Timmy's in a swimming pool? There's happy music playing, so nothing bad will happen, right? Right? Wrong! <laughs> he doesn't seem to be too upset that his mom's being eaten. At the police station... Ah, cop humor. Apparently, Mickey threw a javelin or some sort of thing through a local bully's convertible top. Oh, they're spear guns. The chief seems to be sweating. Yo, Neptune. Forgot you tried. Ah, you try to murder someone, but eh, you got a bright future. Get out of here, you two. The cop brings in the kid from the beach. He's in shock, and the cop is an idiot. I looked around, but I didn't see anything. Well, maybe the kid's just mixed up. Shut up. The chief tells the cop what to do. Then uh, run over to the drugstore and get the kid a soda. Or maybe something to eat. Hell, get him drunk. Make him talk. Wow, it really was a different time. The guys are driving to pick up a friend at the train station when here come the bullies. Yeah, you're gonna have to catch us first, Jason. If this guy in a Mustang can't outrun a Toyota pickup, he should just trade it in for a minivan. They stop and Mickey gets a good beating. The next time I see you, get off the road. Get it? What kind of accent is that? The next time I see you, get off the road. Get it? Their friend Elizabeth shows up. There's a big boating event going on, and I'm sure a shark won't show up and ruin the whole thing. Ben arrives to lift his mom off the ground. He goes to see his dad, who hasn't been the same since the incident. He just spends his days in the garage building chicken coops. Ben tells him about how he wants to drop out of college to play golf. He tries to get his dad to go fishing. I don't do much fishing anymore. Come on. How dare you? No one's touched me in five years. They go inside for dinner. It seems Jimmy, their other son, was eaten by a shark. Since Jimmy's death, I... just can't go back out to sea again. Or you can fish in a lake, or a pond, or at the shore, or off a pier, or basically you don't have to go out to sea to go fishing. He decides to try and give fishing another shot. Son, get in here! We're having Dunkin' Donuts munchkins for dinner! At a local bar, casual sexual harassment. Elizabeth is talking to her friends. Considering that this was an Italian co-produced feature, this actress makes me think that they wanted Valentine Monnier but she was a little bit too old to play a teenager at this point. So come on, tell me about college. Are you nice professors? Alicia! Only like three of them. She locks eyes with Alan and... Jason and the jerks show up. 
They compete to see who is the worst actor in the film. This guy. Two vodka with Jack Daniels, straight up. Or this guy. What about those preppies? You know, you really ought to improve your clientele. They're supposed to have a cookout, but John and Mickey are the only ones going. And who's going to do the catching? Who's going to be pitching? Ben's out fishing with his dad. So what's your story about golf and what kind of future is it? I don't know. I like it. It pays good. And then this subplot is never addressed again. They hook something, but oh, it's a feisty one. They reel it in and uh-oh. Now the smartest thing that happens in the entire movie. I caught the anchor, Ben. We're leaving. John and Mickey go to the beach to go fishing. You remember that redfish we caught out here last year? Yeah, man. He was a big one, huh? Almost as big as that blue fish. John goes out and attracts the attention of the evil spirit shark. Mickey just stands there confused like the kid from earlier. So the shark ate him and cleaned up all the blood? Oh, who can stop this evil shark? Help us, Mr. Suki! I will care. Mickey goes to the police. They don't believe him. Mickey rushes over to tell Alan. He brings him in and gives him a large glass of vodka. Turns out Alan's dad is the mayor. He's about to make the sheriff's life miserable. He tells him to call in the Coast Guard and sweep the bay. Sweaty Cop goes to tell John's dad about the accident. His dad doesn't seem too broken up by the news. My son was eaten by a shark. Damn, that sucks. The sheriff then goes to the peach pit to tell the kids he's sorry. My god, he is constantly marinating. They need to pad the film, so Mickey goes back to the scene of the crime to watch some stock footage. The Coast Guard raises the KFC flag. Mickey is upset. It's just not fair. John doesn't even have a grave. Well, yeah, there hasn't even been a funeral yet. The Coast Guard finds a shark and kills it. Of course, it's not THE shark. Mickey gets into an argument with his dad. The acting in this scene is just superb. A month before she hit that tree, she... she I hate you, man! I hate you with all my heart and all my soul. Mickey goes to tell the gang that they got the wrong shark. So, Jason is just part of the group now? The waitress goes off with this guy. They apparently had super fast sex. He's promising that if she gives him one more month, he'll leave his wife. I don't think I believe you. I'll give you just one more week and that's it. She decides to celebrate by going for a semi-clothed swim. The guy sees the shark and, oh, great moral quandary. He doesn't do anything, and the shark eats her whole. Nature just solved my problem. I'm out. Over at the police station. How many sharks can there be out there? Look, we killed one shark. How many could there possibly be out there? The owner of the bar went looking for Janice and found her clothes on the beach. Found these shoes on the beach. They're hers. I know they're hers. Yes, I'm intimately familiar with her feet. Mickey goes to a party to get Ben and Alan. They agree to go kill the shark. They dig up the totem and it's still there. What are the odds? They go to see Ben's dad. You think it's easy to kill a shark? No, but that's why we need your help. He doesn't want to do it. And then suddenly he does. Oh, look, they mixed a big pot of raspberry preserves. They chum the waters for the super shark. Then they start to make meat bombs. The chief is talking to human Humpty Dumpty. The boat gets hit by shark stock footage. Then a uh, rubber shark in a bathtub. The chief shows up and is mad because being outdoors this much makes him more sweaty. The Coast Guard arrives to berate the kids. Tell me you should be ashamed of yourself. Sundown? I would have thought the Edmund Fitzgerald. Elizabeth's mad that Alan's out shark hunting instead of spending time with her. What do you want from me then? Sex? Duh. Mickey and Jason make up and join forces. Alan's dad is finally proud of his son. They load up on dynamite and head out to get the shark. According to the thing, they're on the right track. The plan is to go down to a wrecked boat, load it up with dynamite, trick the shark into going into it, and kaboom! The guys swim down to find a toy boat. Then stock footage. They load up the boat with explosives. They turn on the machine to call the shark. Ah, I see you have the machine that goes bing! 
Jason's stuck, so Mickey goes to save him. He then stays to fix the wires. Hey, you in there? I'm hungry. He gets back just in time to say... Blasted! Oh my god, look at this. He blew up a rubber shark. The gang gets back to town victorious. The sheriff comes to arrest everybody, but has a change of heart. Ah, uh, just give me something to wipe my forehead. Deep Blood was an Italian film that was shot surprisingly in Florida. However, they also filmed in Mississippi, Louisiana, and of course, Italy. The film was a very late entry into the shark exploitation genre. The 70s and 80s were filled with movies like Mako, The Jaws of Death, The Last Shark, and Tinto Rara, Tiger Shark which is one of my favorites. If you've never seen Tintorera, it's a love story where people keep getting eaten by a shark. Anyway, Deep Blood's a ripoff of a bunch of other ideas from other shark exploitation films, but it's still not as bad as Jaws 5, Cruel Jaws. Cruel Jaws not only used footage from other movies, it used pretty much the entire ending of Deep Blood, as well as footage from Jaws. Deep Blood was supposed to be Rafael Donato's directorial debut, but early into filming, he didn't want to do it anymore. Legendary exploitation director Joe D'Amato was already on board as a producer and cinematographer on the film using pseudonyms. After Donato wanted out, D'Amato took over. So even though Donato is credited as the director, it really is D'Amato's film. Donato never attempted to direct again. Deep Blood is not a high point in shark exploitation. It's a little slow, and most of the shark footage is stock footage. The acting is pretty terrible, which makes some scenes hilarious that are supposed to be serious. You drove her crazy. You didn't take care of her. If you didn't run around so much, maybe she would have never started drinking. You don't think I remember that night, but I do. Overall, it's a weird movie by an Italian director filmed partially in America involving an ancient evil Indian shark that is only vulnerable to dynamite. You've got a hell of a nerve. What do you know? I didn't push her off that road. She did that herself. 